<gasps> okay, let's find something. I am not giving up on this challenge. What do I have in this very official Home Depot craft stash box that I can use to not fail at this challenge? Hey craft buddy, today I have got a box. So you know what that means. It is mystery box challenge time once again. I am so excited that we are doing these again for 2023 and you're gonna have to stay tuned to see who sent me this box, what's inside, and all the crazy stuff I have to DIY with this time. All right, let's crack this baby open. So this box came to me from Kelly at Kelly Barlow Creations. And I sent a box to Kelly before Christmas when we did our big Christmas random acts of kindness video. And I sent her some challenging jingle bells to work with. So we'll see how she's paying me back in this box. And if she did, I can't fault her because you know, I like to be a little tricky with these. If you're new to the mystery box challenge, it was started in 2020. So this is the fourth year that blows my mind every time I think about it. Fourth year that we've been doing this. And I know Courtney, creative on the cheap, who runs all of this, has some crazy twists for us this year. So I'm excited and also terrified. So we will just press on and see how it goes. So sometimes the boxes have themes. This time it's an anything goes box. So everybody that's participating got a name. You had to go to any store, spend 20 to $30. So a couple weeks ago, I got to go shopping for Tracy over at Country Charm by Tracy and put together a box for her. So after you watch my video, you're gonna wanna head over to her video and see what I sent her and then also what she did with it. Some people nice through and through. Some people ruthless through and through. Some people 50-50 nice and ruthless. I think I fall somewhere in the center. Here is my box from Kelly. Pretty blue tissue paper. You can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. And I can't wait to see your amazing creations. Happy crafting, my DIY friend. And she sent me a Starbucks gift card, which was so, so nice. I'm so excited. I might need, I might need some caffeine in this process. First thing I'm seeing, oh this is cute, is some burlap trim. We also have a three count DIY ceramic coaster. A cute little house. I have seen these before. These are Dollar Tree. Some cutlery set from the kind of nautical line at Dollar Tree. Oh, a vinegar bottle. A little pig. It's like it lights up too. And it says Farm Sweet Farm. Ooh, so I bought, I showed some of these in a recent haul and I haven't used it yet. So this is the wood bead circle from Dollar Tree. And then we've got a letter board. This is cute. This is Dollar Tree actually. And it comes with all these letters on the back. Oh, and I've got some tissue to work with. And then we've got a wall cling from Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna talk about challenge items because it's the mystery box challenge. I've got two challenge items here. Now I have to use these in a DIY. They don't have to be used together, but I have to use them. And usually I try to use everything in the box. If I don't use everything in the box, it's because I'm straight up stumped. Okay, so we've got some shower curtain rings. Not too bad, not too bad. Challenge item number two. And a black shower curtain. Okay, well, that sure is a challenge. Every person that sent a box, you get to pick the twist for the recipient. So one of the options Kelly could have chose, option one was I had to work a plastic water bottle and one of those challenge items into the same DIY. Option number two, I must work wood, metal, and plastic into one DIY. Or option three, you send a project that you've started but never finished and include a description of what the product project is supposed to be so that that person then has to essentially finish it. The twist, finish this project I started and never finished. Kelly chose option number three for me. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Kelly, you came through for me. This is not too bad. <laughs> the shower curtain, challenging, but this, I can work with this. Okay, so I'll have to shoot her a message and see what it was originally supposed to be because I think I'm supposed to like take her idea and get it over the finish lines. All right, so I've got my items, my challenges, and my twists, so let's get crafting. 
I'm kicking it off strong just by taking that twist head on. So we're going to take these two boxes and we're going to dupe this Frosted Sage arrangement from Kirkland's. So I started by taking off the stickers on the bottom because I wanted to make sure that those were out of the way. And then I took some plastic wood to fill these little slats in the side. If you haven't worked with plastic wood before, it's kind of, it's like a putty consistency. And I use both my finger as well as this Dollar Tree Cricut scraper to get the wood filler into the holes. Now you're gonna to wanna to let it completely dry and when it does, it's gonna be a little bit lighter. And then I took it out and did a power sand. You could also do this by hand, but this saves me time because I already have it in my tool stash. Then that plastic wood is stainable. So I'm gonna stain the entire thing in early American stain because I wanted that deep stain color underneath my paint from the inspiration. If you just wanna paint it, you can omit the step of staining. I let the stain dry overnight and then I went in with this sandstone color that I recently found at Walmart. I found a local Walmart that still sells Waverly. Woohoo! If you have your section turn over to that happy hobby or hello hobby, hello, I don't even know what it's called, but if you've had that happen to you, you know how exciting it is when you find Waverly in the store. I distressed it really quick on the edges with some sanding blocks and then while I was at that Walmart, I grabbed these not knowing what I was gonna need them for, but these eucalyptus picks are beautiful. I used the little center opening from the Dollar Tree trays to slide in some leaves and then I also did some additional arranging around the outside to get a really nice full display. This was super quick and easy to put together and I like that it really elevates the look covering the slats with that wood filler. Now there are a lot of different things that you could do with this beyond just leaving it plain like this. You could add some Easter eggs in a variety of different colors. You could either go neutral or a brighter color for that time or you could add things like carrots and I did white tulips here for Easter. You could also just do flowers for spring. You can also easily transform this into a St. Patrick's Day thing. You just slide everything in there and then when you're done, take it out and you've got your neutral piece once again. We're gonna keep the dupe train going here with these challenge items and we're gonna dupe these Kirkland's napkin rings. I wanted to do this in my big high-end dupes video for Easter and spring, but when I saw that Kelly sent me these, I decided to wait and do it in this video just because I knew that I was gonna have to use napkin rings for the challenge item. So I got this idea from Jay over at J Money DIY. She wrapped some binder clips in raffia and it looked so good. Everything she does looks good, but I was really drawn to that project. So I used some orange raffia that I had at my house and wrapped it around using hot glue to hook it. Now I have these little carrots that I got from Michael's, but you could easily use Dollar Tree carrots as well. Glue them on, wrap the end so it looks finished. Just slide them right over a napkin and you've got a super fun and festive look for your tablescape. I love having seasonal napkin rings, so this was perfect for my house, something that I was actually really needing and gonna use. Then I decided to break out this wall sticker because I had an idea for that as well. So I recently hauled some of these little wood ornaments in an egg shape. So I painted those in the sandstone color that you saw me use on the box earlier. I did both sides and let it dry. I also wrapped the remaining six shower curtain rings in just natural color raffia. I added my egg to the front, and then I had letters in this wall decal that matched Alex, Whitney, Finn, Sebastian. Yes, I know I put my dog on nameplates for my house. It just is what it is. But then I added a couple extra letters, and these would be so fun to add to your setup for Easter. You can have everybody's little initial on there. And I would suggest if you wanna recreate these, just either use some rub-on letters, other stickers, or you could cut a decal out with your Cricut. But these are so fun, they look so cute, and you could even intermix them and do some of the carrots, some of the Easter eggs, super fun and cute. All right, friends, now bear with me. This is a beast of a video with a ton of projects, but that's because Kelly sent me so many great things like these ceramic coasters. I decided to pair them with these two for $5 bunnies from the Target dollar spot. And I originally was gonna add some like Easter grass or moss, but once I glued these down, I fell in love and I just wanted to leave well enough alone. I think they look so cute on pedestals. You could add them to the top of candlesticks and I think they are just so classic and beautiful. I also like the hexagon shape because you could push them together or pull them apart. I love it and sometimes simple is the best way to go. 
Up next, we're grabbing this metal house and we're heading outside to my scrap wood pile. I grabbed some of this one by two I had left over from my recent one by two projects video and I'm measuring from the top of the house to the edge of the little eave so that I can cut it. Headed over to my saw, cut that down and then lined up my piece again so that I could create a, another one down the other side of the house. Now this is totally optional. You can do what I'm about to do with the sign without the wood, but I thought the wood added a nice touch. I gave it a quick sand and then stained it with my favorite Minwax Early American Stain and let that dry. Then I needed something to adhere a printable to because I wanted to make a little printable sign. So I used cardboard, another one of my favorite things, and I traced the house and cut out a piece of cardboard that I could mount a printable on. I also allotted a little bit for the 90 degree angle at the top of the roof because the Dollar Tree sign wasn't a perfect 90 degree angle for my wood to sit on. Then to size my printable, I measured and decided it needed to be 5.75 by 6.25. And you can do that by putting it into a Google Doc, clicking image options and sizing it that way to then print. I needed to have some overhang of the printable so I could stick it down with double stick tape and then trim it to the sign. Last step was to use hot glue to hook my printable on the cardboard to the metal. And then I also hooked my two pieces of wood on with the glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks and these hold wood, metal, plastic, all the things. And I think this sign is so cute and fun. This is a printable that I have over on my blog. So that'll be part of the download pack if you wanna recreate this. Chilling with my peeps, so fun. This next one, we're crossing off two of the items in the box, both the burlap trim, as well as this crafter square wood beaded circle. In my recent Easter and spring haul, I shared that I grabbed a couple of these. So I ended up having three total and I originally was just gonna hook these on as ears, but while they were bent, cause there's wire inside, they were far too big. So I grabbed my needle nose pliers, unhooked the ends and removed eight beads from each circle for the ears. That just made them more right sized to the bottom circle. After adjusting where it was bent to create that ear shape, I hooked my piece back up and then I had a little bit of wire that hung out at the bottom and that was perfect because I looped that around and that is how I hooked my ear to my bunny circle head. I repeated the same step with the other ear and then it was time to decorate. I did a wide variety of different hand cut felt leaves and flowers because I have a ton of felt that I found when I recently did my craft room declutter and organize. I had way more felt than I thought. So I just cut some circular pieces, cut a slit down the center and hooked them together to make them 3D. And then to make some flowers, all you need is a piece of felt, scrap can even work and make a kind of rounded shape. Then I start from the outside and cut about a one inch wide, a little less strip and just keep spiraling around to the center. Once you get to the middle, leave yourself about a quarter size piece and then start at the other end wrapping. Pick whichever end you wanna be the bottom and make sure that all of your felt is laying flat, but it's really fun because these are hard to mess up. Like you just cut it and you want them to look whimsy, which is a great project to sit and binge a Netflix show. Then when you get around to the bottom, just add some glue, hook it down with that quarter piece, and you've got a really pretty hand cut felt flower. Now I also decided to do it in white, but then I glued some of that burlap trim to the end that I would start wrapping. And that created a really pretty center of my flower that looked like burlap. You just wrap it the exact same, but it's gonna give kind of the illusion that the center of your flower is burlap and it is so pretty. Another technique I did was I took some one inch strips of felt in both yellow and this cream color, cut some small slits with my little Fisker felt scissors, and then I wrapped it around with some hot glue. And these can either be the center of flowers, you can wrap stuff around the outside, or I made a few of these in green, yellow, and cream so I could add them as filler. My last flower to make was a calla lily. I just took some scrap white and trimmed the top after kind of twirling it up like a ice cream cone. And then I made a little fringy out of yellow and added that to the inside. Then I did a quick flat lay, kind of a dry fit of figuring out where I wanted some of my flowers to go. And you don't have to lay everything out perfect before you start gluing, but kind of get an idea because I cannot tell you how many times I've done something like this and I just start gluing like coming in hot and then you're like, ooh, that should not have been glued there. So I started with a base of some of those leaves and then trying to incorporate like where some of the brown went, where some of the green went, things like that. Then as things got glued down, I made additional flowers in different variations so I could fill it out. 
tied some jute twine on the tops of the ears, and this thing was ready for display. I love these colors. I did one similar last year with a bunny head wreath form, but the flowers that I did were more of a purple. So this is more of a neutral and this gives me the ethereal kind of Easter vibes where you've got the greens, the creams, a little bit of burlap as well as the calla lilies. So you could go whatever color you want, but I really love this and it's going to be on display on my blanket ladder in our front room and I love how it turned out. I was super duper stumped with this vinegar bottle. This was one of the last projects that I made for this video, but I am really happy with what came of it. So I decided to go the wood build route because you guys know me, when I am stumped with stuff, that is what I do. So I took my vinegar bottle, laid it on a scrap one by four piece and marked the length of the bottle. I cut four pieces like that to intertwine to create a box. So we're creating an outside for this vinegar bottle to fit into. Then I measured the bottom to figure out how long my one by two scrap needed to be. And I cut three of those pieces that I was then going to hook together to be the bottom. After a quick sand of all the pieces, I added some wood glue to my three pieces of one by two and clamped them together so they would stay. We're not trying to do anything crazy here with the amount of weight it should hold. So I just went with the wood glue and I didn't worry about nails or screws or anything. Then for the box, I needed a couple nails, but I started with the wood glue again. I applied it to the edge, got it to make my 90 degree angle like I wanted, and then I clamped it down. I like the clamp when I go to nail things together as well as to hold it with the wood glue. I just hung it over the side of my little work table here. It's the Cobalt brand. So many of you ask about this every time I share it. We've had it for a couple years, but I have an alternative that will be down below because I don't think they sell this one anymore, but there's a similar one. After I added the nails, I sanded it with my power sander just to get it flush. Pine is such a soft wood that you can go through and kind of adjust if things aren't laying flat. Then I added some more wood glue to attach my two pieces together. So you just repeat and you make your two sides and you hook the two sides together, clamped them. And then I did the same thing added with my one inch nails on my Ryobi Power Strike. If you don't have a nail gun, you could probably leave the wood glue clamped because again, we're not doing anything crazy with weight, but I just wanted to reinforce it with those nails. I sanded all of the edges down, added the bottom with some of those nails again, and then I wanted to distress it. So this is an optional step, but I decided to use a hammer, both the actual hammer side as well as the top of it to add some dents and dings in the wood. Cause again, pine is a soft wood. It takes distressing really well. And once I stained it with the early American, it looked a little bit more like reclaimed wood than just fresh from the store pine. So once my box was done, stained and dried, I filled up that vinegar bottle with some water. Then it will slide right inside, it's hidden, but then you can use some blooms from your yard and add them in there. They will stay alive because you've got the water, but you also have the rustic look of the vase. Every year in the springtime, Finn and I like to find blooms in the yard and sometimes you only get two or three. So this is the perfect size for those spring blooms to bring inside or if you've got lavender, things like that, and it looks nice and rustic. I really loved how the distressing came out on this and you can style it for a variety of different things like St. Patrick's Day. These are my faux Amazon tulips that I love that you can just take the vinegar bottle out and use it as a regular vase if you don't need the water. Nice and versatile and it looks so cute with these tulips in it. You guys, I am so ready for spring. On a recent trip to Dollar Tree, I grabbed some packs of these craft eggs, not knowing what in the world I was going to do with them, but I knew I needed them. And this is the project why I needed them. I grabbed the tissue from Kelly and I decided to decoupage these. And it went a lot better than I thought because I don't do a lot of projects like this, but this is how you're going to do it easily. I just did a foam brush, added some Mod Podge to one side of the egg, and then I added some strips that I cut of the striped tissue paper. And then I'm pushing it down using my finger and making sure that I'm getting it to sit down as much as I can. Now you're gonna get some wrinkles, no huge deal. Just use some more Mod Podge to push it down. And once they're done, you can have both the large and the small decorated and they're so cute. Now, by the time I got to the small, I learned some more things that I wanted to share with you guys. So I curved the tops here and then I also trimmed it as I went to help it lay down on both the top and the bottom of the eggs. I love these so much. They go so cute in this little Target Dollar Spot container. They also go really well in that display that we made earlier, that Kirkland's box dupe. And how fun are they with my little Hobby Lobby glasses? Bunny, I love it. 
Another thing you can do with this is take a dowel needle, D-O-L-L, -L, one of my favorite things and a must have for making garlands. I will link mine from Amazon down below. You can pop that right through the center of the styrofoam. I just use the table to kind of use leverage to push it through. And then I used some of the beads that I had left over that I removed from those wood bead circles from the bunny head. Once I had enough strung up, I wrapped some jute twine around my four fingers 25 times, and then I used another piece of jute twine to tie the loop together. Once the loop was tied together, I pulled everything down and I added another piece around the top to create the head of a tassel. Once that's tied, you are going to just cut the ends into little fringes, and then you can give it a haircut so everything is straight. And the last step is to tie it on to your strand, and I did one tassel on each side. This is a great piece to just add to a setup to add some texture or color, and it looks really cute alongside those little gold bunnies from earlier. Whew, you guys, it has already been just a jam-packed video and I've got more projects for you because Kelly gave me that huge box. If you are still with me, head down to the comments and let me know. Just put still here or something to that effect so I know that you stuck with me. So for this cutlery, I decided to break out my Cricut and cut some of my felt scraps I've had in my stash for a while and to create some little holders for the cutlery for some parties you might have coming up. So I was inspired by another creator on Cricut Design Space because you can now share projects and things like that. And so I've shared this. So all you guys have to do is go in and click make it if you want to make these. You can go in and customize if you just want one of the three options, but it's going to have both the felt information as well as the heat transfer vinyl that I'm going to add to this. So I did a fresh farmer's market, a Easter one, and then I also did a St. Patrick's Day. So when it all cuts out, you're going to have a cream piece of felt or a lighter color, whatever you opt for. And then you're going to have two pieces of your main color. I put my frame around the cream piece just to make sure I was lining up my heat transfer vinyl correctly. And then I'm using my little Cricut Easy Press Mini to press it on there. Now I decided to do the pressing first because if you press on top of hot glue, it's just going to remelt on you. And then I just use some hot glue to apply it. Now you want to make sure you don't add any to the top so that it stays open like a little flap. So I added those into the little flap, added some jute twine, and voila. Now the great thing is, like I said, this is a ready-made project on Cricut Design Space. Just head down to the description and there will be a link for you. Once the screen pops up, just click open in design space or you can head over to my profile and you can follow me in Cricut Design Space as well. I absolutely love this. I'm making more of these for my St. Patrick's tablescape because how cute are these? And they would also double as little treat containers. So if you want to add some like jelly beans or a candy bar, you can do that as well in these little pouches. They don't just have to be for cutlery. Ooh, I love these so much. All right, so poor Mr. Pig in transit lost a leg and another leg got broken. I didn't realize it in the unboxing, but if you go back and look, Mr. Pig has a broken leg. So I decided to pivot and try to use the Farm Sweet Farm on the front as a stencil. And I thought, okay, this is going to be great. I'm going to triple tape it. I'm going to make sure that this doesn't move on me. So I used my painter's tape, hooked everything down, took it outside, sprayed directly down lightly, and then I went to peel it back in. Bum, bum. That was an absolute fail. And then I had like a half black spray painted pig with no legs. So sad. So I came back up to my craft room a little delirious and I'm not sure if it was the spray paint fumes, but I broke out the letter board and I decided to make a little message for myself. And I think I'm going to leave it like this and leave it up in my craft room. I wanted it to say mystery boxes without a fail. Ah, okay. Let's find something. I am not giving up on this challenge. What do I have in this very official Home Depot craft stash box that I can use to not fail at this challenge? I did not want to let this pig be the only thing I didn't use. So I popped off some of these 3D pieces that held it up and I decided to use them as little bases for these eggs. So I recently hauled these as well in my spring and Easter haul and I just took the ribbon, cut it off and then glued the squares on the bottom. They then help the eggs hold up. You can have them as a nice little display here. It would look really cute in like a TV console or in a small area, or you can set them up with something else like these Pottery Barn terracotta bunny dupes that I have in a recent video that I'll link for you, or you can just use one and add it to a vignette. There are a ton of different options, but I am happy that I redeemed this. And this was a project I was planning on doing anyway. So if you have those eggs and want to do the same thing, you could easily just cut apart some paint sticks or even some popsicle sticks, glue them to the bottom and you're good to go. 
All right, you're probably thinking to yourself, what in the world is she going to do with that shower curtain? Well, I had some of these little square dowel rods left over that I used in the last mystery box to make this. And so I had two pieces cut to 12 inches and I decided to paint them with that sandstone paint. That is the theme color of this video. Once they were painted, I realized I needed about a nine inch decal to be applied so that I could create kind of like a tapestry hanging. So I designed this, this will be free over on my blog if you wanna put this on a shirt or your own sign. And it says, a lady never shares the size of her craft stash, which is just kind of tongue in cheek and cute. So then I cut a piece of the shower curtain down to size and I ended up doubling it up because this thing is so thin, you guys. It's like their tablecloth kind of. And so I doubled it up to make sure it wouldn't be super flimsy. And then I added my decal to it with paper transfer tape. I thought the regular transfer tape would totally rip it to shreds and I think it probably would have because this paper transfer tape gripped on pretty well. And when I cut my tablecloth, I gave myself some extra space on the top and the sides so then that way I could apply my decal and then hook on my pieces of wood and then trim it so I didn't cut too much off and then I was up a creek without a paddle. It took a couple tries but I got everything lined up and then I went through and trimmed the side trying to get it as straight as I could. And then I used my staple gun to hook the shower curtain to the wood piece. I tried to pull it a little taut to get rid of those wrinkles because it wasn't like I could iron it. And I didn't even think about trying to steam it. But once the wood got on there, it kind of stretched it out and made it so it wasn't as wrinkly. Then I used those staples again to add just some jute twine so that I could hang it up. I love having things that have craft sayings as well as inspirational things all around my craft room. And I think this turned out so cute. I love this cut file, especially, and if you're interested in using it, like I said, this will be available over on my blog. You can find the link to that down in the description. And if you're on the app and can't find the description, you want to click more after the video's title and it will expand for you. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed all of the projects. And if you did, be sure to head down to the comments and let me know. Now, if this is your first time on my channel, be sure to hit subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any new videos that I have coming out for 2023. And up next for you is Tracy's video from Country Charm by Tracy. So head down to the description or the pinned comment. You'll be able to find the full playlist and they will all run in a loop so you can see everyone's video and get inspiration for days and days to come. And a huge thank you to Courtney for coordinating all of these mystery box shenanigans as she has done for the past three years and will in this fourth year. I'm so thankful for her and all of the work she does for these because I know I love to do them. The other creators do too and we love to see your response to them. Also a huge thank you to Kelly for a great box and some fun challenges. Catch you in the next one. Bye!